Hey guys, today we are going to look at interpreting slope-intercept form. We're going to answer the question, how do I write equations in slope-intercept form from real-world equations? So just a quick review of y equals mx plus b. That is slope-intercept form. So to write an equation in slope-intercept form from real-world situations, we will need the slope m and the y-intercept b, and we will need to be able to recognize what the independent x and dependent y variables represent so we can make sense of it. Slope, remember it's also called the rate of change. In a word problem, we're gonna look for the value that is changing or repeating. And then the y-intercept is often the starting value since it is where x equals zero. So the y-intercept is often the starting value in real world situations. It can also be identified as a one-time fee or charge or the beginning point. So let's look at number one. It says Lake Travis currently has a water level of 675 feet. That sounds like a starting level to me. So that might be our B value. Let's keep reading to see. It says it decreases an average of 0 0.3, 0 0.03 feet each day that it does not rain. So it decreases, that is negative, and then that sounds like how much it's changing by, so that's probably our slope. It says write a function that can be used to find the water level, W of X, after X number of days. So remember, W of X, that would be the output in function notation, that's the same thing as Y. So we will write it in W of X equals M X plus B form, instead of y, since it wants us to write it in function notation. So m is what we need for the slope, and that is how much it was changing by. It was decreasing 0 0.03 feet per day. And then b is the starting, and it says it currently has 675 feet. So our function would be w of x equals negative 0.03x for decreasing 0 0.03 feet each day, and it currently has 675 feet, so plus 675. This one says, what will, what will the water level be after 13 days? So the problem told us that x represents the number of days. So they're just telling us to replace x with 13, in the function that we just wrote. So I'm going to find the water level after 13 days by doing negative 0.03 times 13 for the number of days plus 675. And I'm just gonna put that in the calculator, negative 0.03 times 13 plus 675 after 13 days, it looks like the water level would be 674.61 feet. Okay, then it says if the water level is currently at 674.4 feet, how many days has it been since it last rained? So they also told us what variable or variables represent the water level. It says the water level is W of X. So we're gonna replace W of X with 674 in our function. So I'm still using this function. I'm replacing W of X with 674.4 and then solving for X, which would be the number of days. So it would be 674.4 equals negative 0.03x plus 675. I just replaced w of x with the water level and now I'm going to solve for x to figure out the number of days. So I'm going to subtract 675 and 674.4 minus 675 is negative 0 0.6 and that equals negative 0.03x. And then the last thing I need to do to find x is divide by 0 0.03, negative 0 0.03. So negative 0.6 divided by 
negative 0 0.03 is 20. So after 20 days, the water level would be at 674.4 feet. All right, let's look at number two. A scuba diver is currently 60 feet below the surface of the water. So that kind of sounds like a y-intercept to me. That's where he's at. That's where he's starting at. He is ascending, so going up towards the surface at a rate of 3.5 feet per minute. So that must be the slope since they told me that that is the rate and that's what he's changing by. Write a function that could be used to find the depth of the diver, d of x, after x number of minutes. So again, they're just wanting us to write this in function notation. We can think of d of x as y. So we will write it in the form d of x equals mx plus b. So that's what they're wanting us to do on number one, write the function. So I'm going to figure out the slope and the y-intercept, and then I'll be able to write that. So the slope is 3.5 feet per minute, and he is going up at that rate. So it's positive 3.5 for the slope. And it says he started at 60 feet below the surface. So that starting point or y-intercept would be negative 60. So our equation or function would be d of x equals 3.5x minus 60. Okay, then number two says after eight minutes, how far below the surface of the water will the diver be? So they gave us the information eight minutes and it told us up here that X was the number of minutes. So we're just gonna substitute in X for eight in our function. We will find D of eight by doing 3.5 times eight minus 60. So 3.5 times 8 minus 60. So after 8 minutes, that diver will be at negative 32 feet instead of negative 60 feet. Okay, let's look at the last part. It says if the diver is 11 feet below the surface of the water, how long has he been ascending towards the surface? So this time I'm finding the number of minutes x. They gave me the depth of the diver d of x. So I'm gonna replace d of x with negative 11. Since he's 11 feet below, he's still negative, equals 3.5x minus 60. And now I just need to solve for x so I can figure out how long he has been diving. So I'm gonna add 60 and I get 49 equals 3.5x, and then I just need to divide by 3.5 to figure out how long the diver has been diving. So 3, or no, 49 divided by 3.5 is 14. So he has been diving for 14 minutes when he is at that negative 11 depth. All right, let's look at number three. It says Oliver the Poodle ha currently has hair that is 0.5 inches in length. That sounds like a y-intercept to me. That's our starting point. Every day, his hair grows 0.1 inches in length. Sounds like that might be a rate of change or slope because that's how much it's changing by. Write a function that can be used to find the length of Oliver's hair, h of x, after x number of weeks. Okay, we need to be careful here because they gave us the rate of change in days but they want us to write a function based on the number of weeks. So let's think about this. If his hair is growing 0.01 inches per day to figure out how much it grows in a week, I would just multiply it by seven since there are seven days in a week. So that means our slope is going to be 0.07 here. And the first question says, write a function to represent this situation. We just found the slope. They want us to write a function based on the number of weeks, and we know his hair is going to grow 0.07 inches per week. And then he currently is starting at 0.5 inches. So now I can write my function h of x equals 0.07 
x plus 0.5. All right, the next question says, how long will Oliver's hair be after six weeks? So this is why it's good that we converted the slope to number of weeks, because now I can just plug in this right here and I don't have to worry about changing the slope. So six weeks, it says X is the number of weeks. So I'm just gonna replace X with six. So I will find H of six by doing 0 0.07 times six plus 0 0.5. And I'm just gonna put that in the calculator. 0 0.07 times six plus 0 0.5. So after six weeks, his hair would be 0 0.92 inches. All right, then C says if Oliver's hair is 1.55 inches long, how many weeks have passed since his hair was 0.5 inches? So the length of Oliver's hair is represented by H of X. So I'm going to replace h of x in my function with 1.55, and then I will solve for x, which is the number of weeks. So now I'm going to subtract 0 0.5, and I get 1.05 equals 0 0.07x, and then I'm going to divide by 0 0.07 and 1.05 divided by 0 0.07 is 15. So after 15 weeks, his hair would be 1.55 inches long. Okay, number four says Ella pours herself a 20 milliliter cup of coffee in the morning. After 30 minutes, she has 10 milliliters of coffee. What is the rate of change of milliliters per minute that Ella is drinking her coffee? So they didn't tell us the rate of change here, but they did give us enough information to figure it out. Let's organize the information that they gave us in a table. They are telling us how many milliliters she's drinking in minutes. So when she started out at zero minutes, she had 20 milliliters. And then after 30 minutes, she had 10 milliliters. So now I can use slope formula to figure out how much she was drinking her coffee each minute. So this would be x1 and x2 because the minutes are the independent variable and then y1 and y2. So my slope will be y2 minus y1, so 10 minus 20 all over x2 minus x1, so 30 minus zero. So 10 minus 20 is negative 10, 30 minus zero is 30. So that simplifies to negative one third. So she is drinking one third milliliter per minute, or you could think of it as one milliliter every three minutes. It says write a function to represent the total amount of coffee left C of X after X number of minutes. So to write our function, we need the slope which we just found in part A, it was negative one third. And then we need the Y intercept, which is how much she started with. She started with 20 milliliters. So now I can write the function. It would be C of X equals negative one third X plus 20. And then part C says, how much coffee will Ella have left after 45 minutes? So X is the number of minutes. They just told us that they want us to solve for when X is 45 here by telling us find how much coffee she'll have left after 45 minutes. So I'm just going to replace X with 45 and solve for how much coffee she'll have left after 45 minutes. And I'm just gonna put that in the calculator, negative one third times 45 plus 20. After 45 minutes, she will have five milliliters of coffee left.